What the heck is the difference between a fiber and a CO2 laser? If you're new to the channel, welcome, and thanks for joining me. If you've seen my other videos and are coming back for more, thank you very much. If you don't know me, my name is Brett, and this is my laser garage. In today's video, we're going to continue our Monport GI60 fiber laser series by exploring what the heck is the difference between a fiber and a CO2 laser, and which one would win in a head-to-head -head battle. Well, we're gonna dive into that right now. Let's go. What is a fiber laser? Fiber lasers are Galvo style machines, which means they use two precision mirrors inside the laser head assembly to aim a beam at any angle within the limit of the machine. The two mirrors scan extremely fast along the X and Y axes, deflecting the laser beam to the intended marking area. This allows them to mark metal extremely quickly and with high precision. They excel at marking metals because they typically operate in the 1064 nanometer wavelength, although this can vary depending on the laser source. There are many types of Galvo lasers on the market today, but we're going to be focusing on the Monport GI60 MOPA fiber laser because that's what I have in my shop. Let's take a closer look at the GI60 specs. This laser has a JPT M7 60 watt MOPA laser source, which operates in the 1064 nanometer wavelength. It's air cooled and capable of engraving up to 10,000 millimeters a second. It's accurate up to 0.01 millimeters, has a marking area of 7.9 by 7.9 inches with the stock 200 millimeter lens, and has a service life of approximately 100,000 hours. The laser has a footprint of about 22 inches by 13.4 inches by 28.3 inches, and it weighs about 22 kilograms or about 48 pounds. This laser can engrave all kinds of metal, including stainless steel, aluminum, gold, silver, or all metal alloys. It can also engrave ceramics, slate, marble, leather, and many other types of plastics. The GI60 is currently on sale right now for about 4,800 bucks, but generally speaking, typical gavel style lasers range anywhere between 2,500 to $10,000, depending on options and capability, with advanced industrial models, of course, going for even more. So now we have a basic understanding about gavel lasers, and specifically the GI60 by Monport. Let's take a look at the Challenger, the CO2 gantry style laser. So what is a CO2 gantry style laser? Basically, these lasers get their power from a glass laser tube, which is filled with carbon dioxide and other gases. A power supply is needed to ionize the CO2 gas molecules while also supplying power to the drive motors. Mirrors direct the beam to the laser head assembly and through a focusing lens. Pressurized air is sometimes plumbed into the end of a laser head to assist with the cutting process. The laser tube is kept at an optimal temperature using a water cooling system. There are many types of CO2 gantry style lasers of varying power and working size. Today we'll look at my CO2 laser, which is a Monport 80 watt machine. As the name suggests, this laser has an 80 watt glass laser tube. It can engrave up to speeds of 600 millimeters a second. It comes standard with autofocus and automatic Z height adjustment, air assist, and three LED strip lights inside the cabinet. The working area of the laser is 24 inches by 36 inches, but it also has a front pass-through door to accommodate larger materials. This laser can cut or engrave a wide variety of materials such as wood, glass, acrylic, fabric, leather, paper, cardboard, rubber, and much more. Prices for a hobby CO2 laser generally start around $25 on the low end, $5,000 for the mid-range, and about $10,000 or more for the higher end models. Industrial style machines will be much more expensive in price. The 80 watt Monport I'm using today is on sale currently for about 4,000 bucks. Now that we've gotten to know a little bit more about the two laser competitors in this contest, let's take a look at the specific advantages and drawbacks of each. First off, take a look at the compact size of the GI60. This laser can be placed on a desk or work table in basically any room in your house or shop. It's also relatively portable, coming in at about 50 pounds. The laser comes in the mail via standard shipping, so no need to set up freight delivery. Setup is simple and only requires a few turns of a screwdriver. Engravings aren't producing a ton of smoke or fumes generally, so exhaust venting is straightforward with a fan plumbed out of a window, for example. The GI60 excels at engraving or annealing various types of metals, which makes it a great option for high-speed marking of objects. Engravings are also extremely crisp and detailed and can be placed accurately with real-time red laser framing. Keeping the GI60 tuned is extremely easy as well. So easy you don't need to do anything. Because Galvo mirrors are permanently fixed inside the laser head assembly, there is no need to clean or align them. 
And finally, the lifespan of the laser source is 100,000 hours. That is crazy. Wow, that's gonna be tough to beat, but no machine is perfect. So let's look at some of the GI-60's drawbacks. Fibers are excellent at marking metals, stone, and leather, among other things. But if you're looking to work with wood, this is not the laser for you. Working area is also a consideration. With the stock 200 millimeter lens, the GI-60 work area is only about eight inches by eight inches. Also, don't expect to be doing much cutting with the fiber laser. Although it can cut materials such as thin metals, leather, or paper, I wouldn't call this a cutting machine. And finally, let's talk about safety. This laser has an open design, so always make sure to wear proper safety glasses when the laser is in use. Luckily, an optional enclosure is available for this and similar style lasers, which could be handy depending on your workflow. I made a simple plywood shield to place in front of the laser to help with protection, but of course I always wear my glasses as well. So what are the advantages of a CO2 laser? CO2 lasers offer generous bed sizes and oftentimes have pass-throughs to work on materials even larger than the bed of the machine. In the almost two years that I've had this laser, I have not run into anything that I wanted to cut or engrave that didn't fit on the 24 by 36 inch bed. CO2 machines are very versatile and can also engrave or cut a wide range of materials such as wood, leather, glass, acrylic, slate, and more. Speaking of cutting, that is probably the CO2 laser's biggest advantage. Slicing through quarter inch plywood or MDF is a breeze and solid wood and acrylic can be cut at even greater thicknesses. Even though CO2s can engrave well and are powerful cutting machines, they do have some drawbacks. For example, CO2s are large requiring freight delivery. The large footprint can sometimes make it difficult to find a place for these lasers and their necessary exhaust systems. But luckily they do come in a large variety of configurations so you can find the model to fit your space. CO2 lasers require a separate water chiller to keep the laser tube cool. This is typically a separate purchase that also needs to be made. I like the space saving option given to me with this Monport laser due to its integrated water chiller. This saves space and money. Setup and maintenance on a CO2, although relatively easy and straightforward, must be accounted for. Things like mirror alignment and the cleaning of the mirrors and lenses must be factored into your workflow. Neglecting these setup and maintenance items will greatly affect laser performance. It's also worth noting that CO2 lasers have limited capabilities marking metals without the use of marking sprays. So now that we know about each laser and their capabilities, which is the winner? Well, it's a draw. The real answer to that question can only be answered by you and your specific situation. It's totally dependent on what you're trying to accomplish because each laser has different advantages and disadvantages. For example, are you a woodworker looking to brand or customize your cutting boards or engrave signs? A leather worker cutting out wallets and bags? Or are you looking to cut out templates from acrylic? The CO2 laser might be right for you. But are you looking to mainly engrave metal, like branding or adding design elements to firearms? Or do you want to start a business marking components like adding serial numbers, QR codes, or logos onto metal or plastic? In that case, a fiber laser will be the way to go. You may even decide to start with a CO2 laser, but add a fiber in the future. I mean, that's what I did. The choice is yours, but it's really important that you try your best to figure out what you want to use the laser for or have a game plan before making a purchase. I've had a lot of fun talking about these two lasers and I hope you learned a lot. Both are extremely versatile and you can't go wrong with either one. It just depends on what you want to do. One other thing I forgot to mention though, if you'd like to save 10% on all Monport lasers, like the ones we talked about today, plus many more, use my code BRETT10 at checkout at monportlaser.com. This will give you 10% off anything on their site and it stacks with whatever promo they're currently running. This will save you a bunch of money and it also really helps out the channel. If you've enjoyed this video or it helped you out in some way, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment down below to let me know. And if you really liked the video, please consider subscribing to the channel so you don't miss out on the next one. Have a great day everyone and I will see you on the next one.